Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 26 of my Design Patterns video tutorial. This is going to be the final part after covering 24 design patterns. Today, we're going to talk about the visitor design pattern, which is often confusing to people, but by the end of this tutorial, you'll completely understand it. And like most of the other design pattern tutorials, this is 100% encapsulated, so you don't need to watch the other videos if you just want to learn about the visitor design pattern. So let's get into it. So what is the visitor design pattern? Well, it allows you to add methods to classes of different types. However, they don't have to be different types, but that's just an added level of complexity without much altering to those classes. This allows you to make completely different methods depending upon the class that is used. And to phrase it another way, it allows you to define external classes that can extend other classes without majorly editing them. So let's look at this in pictures and make more sense of it. This is a basic sort of UML class diagram of the visitor design pattern and basically what you're going to have here is the visitor interface and we're going to implement the visitor interface in this very specific example using what is called tax visitor what I'm basically going to do here is act as if no taxes existed of any type on products when you buy them and our job is to implement taxes however implement them in a way so that different types of products being either liquor tobacco or necessity items are taxed in completely different ways and then what we're going to do is create the visitable interface and it is going to have a method that every class that implements it being either necessity tobacco or liquor is going to have that accept method inside of it. So let's look over here at what the client's going to do to further explain what's going on over here. First, we're going to create tax visitor, which you can see in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. And then we're going to define one of our class objects. So we're going to define milk as a necessity, and we're going to say that it has a price of $3.47 a gallon. What then is going to happen is this $3.47 is going to come over here. And how we get this double, which is a return value, is we call visitor. Visitor, using method overloading, is going to say, okay, you passed me a necessity. So I'm going to use this very specific form of the method visit, and I'm going to perform a tax calculation, bounce that back as a double, and then that double goes right here, which we can, of course, receive right here. What this is going to allow us to do is to create completely different ways of taxing different objects, as well as very easily implementing new ways of taxing just by implementing the the visitor interface. So let's get into the code and show you an example of exactly how this whole thing's going to come together. So here we are. This is a visitor.java, which you saw previously, and all the code in this video is available underneath of the video in the description area, and you should definitely take a look at it because it is heavily commented. Now this is going to be an interface called visitor, and it's going to be very, very simple, and it's just going to allow us to perform the same action on many different objects of different types. So we just need to go public, double, visit, and then here we're going to handle if a liquor object is passed over, right like that, and then what we need to do is use method overloading to allow us to accept other different types of objects that are passed over. So here we'll have tobacco and then let's just say this is a tobacco object and then also we'll be able to handle necessity objects which would be like food, and then we're going to call this a necessity item. And there you are. You're done with that visitor interface. Now we're going to go into taxvisitor.java, which is going to implement this interface. And as you can see, I did that right here. And up here, I'm going to be changing decimal formatting so that I can show cents in just two digits. So here's tax visitor and implements visitor, which we just created previously. And let's just get the decimal format thing out of the way because it really doesn't have anything to do with this. But I just thought it would be important to use. So there's decimal format. And then here we're going to say that we're going to accept one or more digits and then there for our cents. Then we're going to come in here and go public tax visitor, which is the constructor for this guy. And in essence, he's going to do nothing. He's just going to sit there. I could do all kinds of things with him and you might decide later on you want to, but for now that's just going to sit there. Then what I'm going to do is go up to tax a visitor and it's going to say, hey, there's some methods you need to add in here. I'm going to click on that and create all those so I don't have to type it out. And then I'm just going to override these to make them do exactly what I want them to do. So in this situation, I'm going to go system out print line and say this is a liquor item price with tax is going to be shot out and then I'm going to go return and then I got to do a couple things here I'm going to say double parse int parse double 
and then do DF format. The reason why I have to convert this into a double is because DF format shoots out a string. And then for just liquor items, I'm going to get my price and multiply that times 0.18, which is going to be the taxation on liquor items. And then I'm gonna go liquor items again. And this just provides an easy way for us to be able to calculate tax in a completely different way without altering the classes themselves. So that's why that guy's there. And then get price doesn't need to have anything inside of it. Okay, so you can see exactly how visit is going to work in this situation. And guess what? Visit's going to work in almost exactly the same situation if a tobacco item is shot over here. So we're just going to paste that inside here. And all I need to do is go tobacco item, price with tax, and then this is going to change to tobacco item. And then we're going to change the tax on that just that specific item to 32. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing for necessity items like that and like that, except in this situation, we're going to say that the necessity item doesn't have any tax just to make it simple and show something completely different. So there you go, there's taxvisitor.java. So now what I need to do is go in and actually show you what these classes would look like before they were ever created and the changes that are gonna be needed to make them work. So what I'm gonna have to do here is create what's called visitable.java. And this is another interface. And inside of this, very simply, I'm just going to go public double. And this is the only change that's gonna to have to be made to your classes to be able to implement the visitor design pattern. So now let's go into liquor.java and show you exactly what it would look like before visible was ever even created. So let's say we have private double price and the way that this used to work is taxes didn't exist so we're just going to say okay we're going to get a double passed over to this like that and then we're just going to say price is equal to the item price that was passed over and then we're going to say public double get price return price okay so this is the way that all of these methods were going to look before visible was every ever implemented so let's actually go and create all those so let's just go copy let's jump into tobacco do pretty much exactly the same thing there that is except this of course needs to be tobacco everything else can stay exactly the same and then we'll go into necessity items and that also is going to be exactly the same see and that all works now what happens in the situation where now all of a sudden we have to implement taxes. Well, we could come in here to each one of these classes and create that capability for calculating taxes. However, the problem is what happens whenever we have to implement even more different capabilities to these classes. We're going to have to keep going into every single one and changing them over and over and over again. Or what we can do is use the visitable interface that we just implemented here in this guy. And we just come up here and say add unimplemented methods. And then we hit file save. And now what we can just come in here and do is go return visitor dot visit and then pass it over to this which is a reference to, in this situation to this class which is liquor so that's going to be passed over to this guy and this can be used over and over and over in multiple different ways and execute multiple different methods and this of course doesn't need to be called except i'm using that because that's a common jargon way of referring to these guys but you can see here if i pass over this meaning liquor then should I jump over into this guy and it's going to say okay this is a liquor item and we need to perform certain calculations based off of that fact and then it's going to go down here to tax visitor which implements the visitor interface and it's going to come down here to liquor item and perform this very very specific calculation just for that type of object. So that's what's going on with that. And you can see here, it's very, very simple. And except is exactly the same in every single one of these objects. So let's copy it and we can come in here and paste that in. Okay, now that works. And then we can do the same thing for necessities. And we don't have to care at all about anything. Just let the accept method handle everything for us. And then what's cooler even yet is we could have multiple different types of calculations. So let's say that the government wants to institute some type of tax holiday provision. Well, we could handle that. So let's just go into Tax Visitor and show you exactly how easy it would be to do that. We're just going to copy what's already been done right here. Jump over into Tax Visitor, paste that inside of there, and then this is all the same. However, this is going to be Tax Holiday Visitor. Don't need to change anything else. I mean, everything else is exactly the same. And then we can really, really quickly come in here and say, okay, let's drop the tax on liquor to 10 during our tax holiday and uh, tobacco to 30. And then necessity items don't need to 
to change because they're already at zero. And then we can file save those. Now we just implement it in a couple clicks, a completely different way of calculating taxes. And as you can see overall, this whole thing came together quite quick. And then we can go into visitor test.java and actually see what we got right here. So we'll go tax visitor, and I'm just going to call this tax calc is equal to new tax visitor. This is all about speed. That's the whole reason why you're going to use this guy. And also not be having to change anything in regards to your classes. And then we're going to have tax holiday visitor. And we can perform completely different calculations in that situation. Just type in holiday there, holiday there, and then change that to an uppercase C, holiday C, file save. And you can see really quickly how we're able to do all this. And then we're going to be able to go necessity and say milk, for example, is equal to new necessity and say the price on it's three dollars and 47 cents right like this pretty simple and then we're going to do the same thing for liquor and let's just say vodka and i have no idea how much vodka costs let's just say 11.99 and then tobacco and we'll just say cigars and I also don't know how much cigars cost, so let's just say $19.99 for a box of cigars. I don't know. So there you go. We created our different objects. And now if we want to be able to print out our changes in taxes, it's going to be very, very easy. We're just going to say milk, accept, and pass it tax calc, which is going to be our calculation we want to use at this point in time. And then just to keep everything spread out, I'm going to throw a new line inside of there. And then I'm going to be able to copy that and then just change this to vodka and then change this to cigars. Didn't have to change anything else, so that's pretty cool. And then we could also come in here and do something like tax holiday prices. And then we're just going to copy these three guys right here. Boom. And then we can come in and say holiday, tax holiday. And then we can copy that. Paste that in there and paste that in there. So you just created two completely different ways of taxing, actually six. And then if we execute this guy, you can see exactly how it's going to work. And that's exactly what you say. See, necessity items, price with tax, 347, liquor price, 1415, da-da-da-da-da. Of course, necessity prices don't change. This is during a tax holiday, and so forth and so on. There is a, an extremely useful design pattern called the visitor design pattern. If you didn't quite get it, take a look at the code. Really meticulously look at it, and I guarantee you're going to get it. So what comes up next? Next week, for the people that watch my videos all the time, all 150 of you guys, I'm going to hold a big giant vote. I basically have two groups of people out there who want two completely different types of tutorials, both of which are completely huge. So from November the 6th, through the 12th of next week, I'm going to allow you to decide, based off of just a simple vote, which one I'm going to cover. I'm either going to go down the Android game path, which is also going to include the C programming language drawing, a whole bunch of math, and a whole bunch of other stuff you see right there on the screen, or I'm going to go down the Java Enterprise Edition path, which is going to have all the things you see on the right side of the screen, with a bunch of other things you don't see that will make sense. So I leave it completely to you guys, starting November the 6th, through the 12th. Go out there and vote. Last time I had a vote like this that defined what I did, I had about 43 people vote, so your vote will count. And then this tutorial is going to last anywhere between six to eight months, both of them. So, you know, they're going to be big, giant, massive tutorials, and they're both going to start immediately after my UML 2.0 tutorial, which is going to start pretty much in the next couple days, and my refactoring tutorial, which is going to answer the big question of when do I use design patterns. So there is every Everything I got planned out there and that is in essence kind of sort of the end of my design patterns video tutorial please leave any questions or comments below otherwise till next time